What's up guys? Welcome to Fight Picks with the Pros. My name is Garrett Marchesano and today we're going to review four fights on the upcoming UFC Fight Night featuring Uriah, Primetime Hall, Vershawn, Tarzan, Strickland in the main event. Today I'm joined by, as always, Season 18 Ultimate Fighter champ, Chris Holds It Down Holdsworth. What's up everybody? Let's go. Let's go. Introducing Fight Picks with the Pros. Brought to you by FanDuel. All right, first fight we got up is smiling Sam Alvey as the plus 194 dog versus Roman, the Siberian savage, <laughs> Kopolov, coming in as the minus 245 favorite. So, you know, I, I looked at this fight. I broke it down. It's really a, a gatekeeper fight. Um, if you ask me, Sam Alvey, he's on a pretty nasty losing streak. He lost his last five of six. Now, I was really pulling for him in his last fight as the dog. But he just couldn't pull it out. It seems like you know, I've watched him for a long time now. It feels like a decade I've been I've been watching this guy, and he's just not taking shots like it used to. B leg kicks are affecting him. Body shots are hurting him. He doesn't have the chin like he he used to have. He used to. I've seen this guy take some crazy shots. So my initial thought going into it is that this is a gatekeeper fight. Let's see if Roman can get a you know nasty win over Sam Alvey and, and push him up the ranks. Sam Alvey's on his way out. You know, that's what I see. It really, it is what it is. So, Chris, with that mentality, you know, and you're Sam Alvey, he knows what's what. He's not coming in saying, you know, I think they're making a mistake and I'm the favorite or I'm back, I'm feeling good. He knows what the UFC is trying to do with this fight, and he's got to say, I'm going to spoil the party, right? So what are your thoughts if you're Sam Alvey coming in with this this good prospect? Yeah, my thoughts are, uh, let's try not to get finished because, <laughs> like, I'm already on a huge losing streak. And if I lose this up and comer, like I'm probably gonna get cut. Yep. You know he's coming up on like almost his 50th fight, and yeah. like you said, it, it starts taking a toll on you. You, you can't take the shots that you used to take. Um, you're not as fast as you used to be. You can't recover as fast as you used to be. And like you just said, in my opinion, this Roman, you know, Kopolov, or he looks like an up and coming stud. He looks pretty young. Do you know how old he is or no? He, lo he looks young to he, me. He does look super young. I don't yeah. know the exact age. But, Eight and one, yeah. seven TKOs, coming off straight, seven straight TKOs yeah. or KOs. He did lose his last fight, close fight, but uh, he's still right there as a, as a top prospect. Yeah. And he's looking for the finish every fight. Yeah. Both these guys are Southpaws. I'm going to have to go with uh, the young Roman. Just because, you know, Sam's on his way out. He's an older, and like, like you talked about before, He's coming off a ton of losses, and even though Roman's coming off one loss, I think uh, that was his first loss, yeah. and if anything, that's going to motivate him to never let that happen again. And most of the time, guys that are on an 8 no a, a big win streak, and they get that loss, it kind of like um, lets them know that they're human, and, yeah. and, and they really have perspective, and they change things, and they really figure out like where the mistakes they made or what they could change to get better. And I think that loss always ups pe people's games and always ups them. Um, or some people can maybe do the opposite. It can totally, them, right? totally yeah. crush them, their confidence and stuff. But most of the time, guys, um, it, it ups their game. So I'm going with Roman. Uh, I'm going to say he's going to get a, a quick KO okay. or TKO. Yeah, I think that is a good call. I think Roman is coming in here as the heavy favorite for a good reason. Um, tough. I, I like I said, I've been a, a long time fan of Sal Sam Alvey. I've been watching him fight for a long time. I always pull for him. He has sneaky power in his hands. He he's this big, big bone. He, he if you look at his fist, he has huge fists, and um, he's got those sneaky short punches, those short hooks that put guys away. But he hasn't been able to do it in his last half a dozen fights. He's racking up the losses. I just can't go on his side this time. So I'm going Roman. And for my official fight pick, I'm going to say that Sam Elvey, he, 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 that legacy chin pulls out and he holds up, but he ends up uh, getting the unanimous decision loss. So I'm going Roman unanimous by unanimous, unanimous decision. All right, let's move on to the next fight we've got. Now bear with me on this at one. We got Shamil Abdurak Imam. Not bad. Dude, you did better than I would have. Plus 154 <laughs> dog against Chris Doskas coming in as a minus 192 favorite. 
Um, so this is going to be a great fight. I like both these guys. Shamil, he's more the he's a grappler. He's just big, heavy guy. When he gets on top of you, he can control you on the ground, get the ground and pound going, goes for a lot of submissions. And his highlights alone, you know, you see about three, four uh, Kimura attempts. So, you, you know, he knows what he's doing on the sub side. He's got four subs on his record, 20 wins. His last loss is to Curtis Blades, which, you know, you can't fault him that. Curtis Blades is one of the top guys in that heavyweight division. And then you got Chris Doskis, who's 11-3, and three, another big prospect coming up. Um, Jeff, if you scroll down a little bit, I see that he's on a four-fight win streak, and three of them are in the UFC, and two of them are pre performance in the ninth bonuses, which means you know he's showing out for the UFC enough for them to, to throw him a bonus um, in those fights. So I see it as a bigger grappler submission type guy, even though Shamil does have nine TKOs as well. And we all know what Chris Dossis is going for. Out of his 11 wins, he has 10 TKOs. And um, so he's going for that finish every single time. So out of these two guys, the bigger grappler, the, the, the better striker, um, how do you see this fight playing out, Chris? And is there any guy that you like more than the other? Yeah, Shamil's got more experience. Uh, you know, he's fought more more guys in the UFC. And it looks like he's fought some tough guys. You know, Blade, Lewis, Oski, Walt Harris. Like, yeah. all guys that hit hard that, you know, and, and, and have a good, well-rounded MMA game. So, I think he's going to have the experience on Chris as far as that goes. Um, but you know, Chris is a is a police officer from Philly. You know, you know he's a tough dude. So uh, you know, lands a, a lot of strikes per per minute for for a heavyweight. I think he's what eleven point seven eight strikes per minute. It's a lot uh, for a heavyweight, right? Yeah. Um, so you know, I want to say I want to say Chris by something early because he's got four straight first round TKOs or KOs. Um, but then just the experience of Shim, you know, Shamil is kind of like weighing on, on my heart a little bit. Um, I'm going to go with Shamil on this one. I think okay. the experience, uh, you know, fighting the better, better people, uh, in, in the UFC is going to play dividends. Um, I'm going to go with Shamil by a decision. Okay. I like that. Yeah. You know, he's ranked number seventh. Uh, Chris is at 10. So that shows you that they, they do value Shamil and his skill set. I think Chris is going to find a way to get the finish. I think it's going to play out later in the rounds. He's going to come out hot. Like you said, four straight first-round TKOs. He's going to want to try to keep that streak alive. But I think Shamil is going to weather the storm. It's going to go later in the fight. But at the end of the day, I think Chris is going to keep uh, that streak alive. Um, after watching his highlights, he comes with heavy power. And for a bigger guy, he's got some good stamina. So I'm going Chris Doskus by TKO, probably later in the fight. It's a good call. All right, for the next fight pick, we've got an early prediction, like always, guys. And for this one, we're going to talk about Alexander the Great Volkanovski coming in as the minus 184 favorite as the early lines come out versus Brian T-City Ortega coming at the plus 154 dog. So this is set for September 4th. We all know uh, we're hyped around this fight because of the Ultimate Fighter season out right now. We know that these are the two tough coaches. So we get to hear a lot of the banter back and forth, and it's you know still going on right now. And uh, this is a long time coming. We know their fight was originally booked about three, four months ago. Um, got canceled. That's when they booked him on uh, a tough season, the new season. And that prolonged the fight even more. They had to go through the, all the, uh, the production of that. And now they're finally in September going to fight. This is a, you know, to me, I see the odds, but I would just throw those right out the window. I think this is a straight, even money line type fight. I can see this going either way. One of the toughest fights to call all year, in my opinion. Yeah, Volkanovski, if I just set you up here, Chris, he's 22-1, and 1, 11 TKOs, 3 subs, just a big brute of a guy. You know he's got some huge wins in the UFC. Uh, some notable ones are two over Max Holloway, who's thought to be one of the most dominant guys in that division. This guy hasn't lost a fight since 2013, so he's uh, is not accustomed to losing. And him being the lot shorter guy, he has a two-inch reach advantage, okay? <laughs> so this guy is, he's shorter, but he's got these really? longer That's brute crazy. type arms. Uh, and then on the other side, you see Brian Ortega, 15 and one. The only guy he lost to was Max Holloway. We know MMA math doesn't work, um, you know, because uh, Alexander beat Max twice, right? But Brian really, he went from this BJJ guy with a boxing stat, uh, stance early in his career to this last fight against the Korean Zombie. He had this karate stance that he did the whole fight. Didn't try a takedown. Didn't do any of his BJJ. He just outclassed the zombie on his feet. And so 
and he was bald during that fight. He had that, like the whole new look, whole new mentality, and just showed out. So these are the two, some of the top guys in this division. You can't say anything bad about any of these guys as far as their skill set. So, Chris, my question is to you. We know these are two top-level guys. How do you think their skill sets are going to clash? And where is is Volkanovski going to try to find the advantage over Brian? And where is Brian going to try to get the advantage over Volkanovski? I mean, just looking at Volkanovski's record, 22-1, and 9-0 and 0 in the UFC, that's crazy. And like just knowing the guys he's fought and to have that type of record is like just shows you what type of fighter he is and what type of champion. But, you know, you got Ortega on the other end who, you know, showed a ton of improvement in his, in his it looked like his kickboxing game. Yeah. You know, right? Like, he didn't really throw too many kicks or his combinations with the hands and, 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 and legs weren't as effective and, and pr predominant as this last fight. I think he switched up and got some new coaches and some new training partners. And it looked like it really paid off because, you know, he was landing a lot of good kicks. He Like, he had a different stance. Um, and he just looked more comfortable. He, 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 all his strikes were, were landing efficiently and effectively. Yeah. But, you know, Volkanovski, like you said, has the two-inch reach advantage being the smaller fighter. Yeah. And Volkanovski does a really good job of his in and out coming in and striking and coming out and not getting hit. I think he uses that reach advantage in the blending of the wrestling and yeah. the level changes really well. So you never know if he's going to shoot or you never know if he's going to strike because he's level changing and he's going for takedowns during fights. Um, so I, I really like that about Volkanovski. He, he can take you down and he can grapple you out, um, but he can also outstrike you like like he's done in, in a lot of his fights. So it, I'm interested, interested to see how Brian's going to implement um, and try to use his jiu-jitsu. Because he did well, last fight. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I almost think he's going to try to outstrike Volkanovski. I think he's going to try to play that rangy yeah. game and, and use some of his his, his new weapons. Um, I, I think if Brian finds his chin, you know, he, he can be in trouble. You know, he can sneak something in and find it for sure. And then I, I want to see, like, Brian's so good at, you know, putting those submission uh, chains together and putting you in danger, uh, you know, the whole time you're on the ground. But like Volkanovski, I've never really seen him in 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 bad positions on the ground. Yeah, like I've never so strong, yeah, yeah I've never seen him like in really bad like submission danger either. So like he's gonna be hard to submit. He's gonna be it's hard to take down. Hard to take down. I think he's gonna get some takedowns on Brian, and Brian's gonna you know work some of his his triangle game and uh, work some guillotines on the way down. Yep. So. I feel like if the jiu-jitsu doesn't work, I would like to see Brian use his wrestling and think MMA and try to scramble up and not let Volkanovski uh, use that ride time and that ground and pound where he's effective on top. He's really good uh, at landing shots from, from the guard. So I would like to see if Brian doesn't get the submission in the transition of the takedown and the, the mat to try to work back up to his feet right away and, and go back into that game instead of having Volkanovski try to wear you out and lay on you and, and work his ground and pound, which he's done before. So Oh yeah. And you think on Brian Ortega's side, of course he's got great he, he's got great hands. He's got a great stand up game, especially his you know, what surprised me last time, of course his karate stance from boxing stance switch up. And his leg kicks. He was throwing calf kicks, you know, he was he was pulling out everything. And I was like, I've never seen him throw, you know, more than five kicks in a fight. Now he probably threw 15 high kick, low kick, using left side, right side, switching stances. He looked like yeah. a freaking Bruce Lee out there. Bald head. It was like this total psychological change from Brian Ortega. But a guy like uh, Volkanovski, if the, you know, I don't want to see Brian fall in love with the stand up game to where he's like feels stuck there because he is that BJJ ace. How is he going to take down Alexander? Let's say in the fight where if, if Brian's getting pieced up on the feet and Volkanovski is great at negating the takedowns, how does he – does Brian go for the clinch game and, and work off that? How does he get a takedown? Does he go for a single leg and try to drag him to the ground and stay on top because you don't want Volkanovski to start getting on top of you, ground and pound? How does he switch up his game if he's getting pieced up on the feet? Uh, I would I would say definitely try to clinch up, get double unders. Double underhooks, yeah, yeah. being the taller fighter, uh, try to work the you know the the leg trips and the leg reaps and stuff like that, and just changing the angles. Not always trying one takedown. If one takedown is not working, you have to chain it to another takedown. Single's not working, you're going to a double leg. Yep. Double leg's not working, you can go back to the single. 
you know, so you can blend in your takedowns, you go single to body lock, you know, single body lock to throw by. So you got to be able to mix your, your wrestling up and always keep your opponent off balanced and uh, always thinking like which direction you're going to go. Because as soon as he's planted and, and, and able to kind of defend, he's going to start working on breaking the grip and breaking the hands and you're going to lose all opportunity. So if you do get, you know, around into a good position with your hands and just make sure you finish and or you change to something else and keep him off balance. Yeah, I, I look forward to the scenarios they go. And of course, it's going to be a five round bout. So at the end of the day, Chris, how do you see this fight playing out? I'll let you start. Yeah, I think Volkanovski is going to come out hard. He's going to he's going to press the pace uh, against Brian and, and get in his face like he always does. He he he's a, he's a pressure fighter. He he breaks people with his pressure, and uh, he's going to try that on Brian. And it'll be interesting to see if, if Brian's going to be the aggressor, if he's going to play this this the weight game. And yeah. I don't think he should play the weight game versus Volkanovski um, because we we we've never seen Volkanovski gas out like. He's not one of the type of fighters that you know comes out hard and then finishes soft. Like he he kind of keeps that pace right. the whole time. No, so we can't point. let him get comfortable in the first couple rounds and thinking, oh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna cook him up a little bit and then find my opening later in the fight. Yeah, he's because gonna be there. he's gonna be there. You know, he's I don't think he's gonna give those openings like some other fighters will. So uh, I think Al uh, Volkanovski needs to mix things up as best as possible. Keep Brian guessing. Yep. Um, you know, get some takedowns, some slams, and you know, avoid all the triangles on the way down and the triangles. Um, and I think Brian needs to, you know, work work his boxing, work work his kicks, uh, keep his range. Even though um, Volkanovski's got a two inch reach advantage, it's different when it comes to height. Like even if you have a small reach advantage, I think the height advantage sometimes plays yeah, a factor it's too. It's the, it's the angle you're punching up, you're punching down. Yeah. You know, it's just different angles. So. It's, it's harder to get in and on taller guys. So, you know, Brian needs to use his height. He needs to use his range, use his kicks because, you know, he's got long legs and he's going to have that range aspect on Volkanovski. Maybe time some knees on, on, on coming in and then really oh, yeah, attack. Brian has good knees. Yeah, attack those submissions on the way on the way down. If we're getting takedown, make sure we're looking for the triangles. We're looking for the guillotines and we're looking to scramble as soon as we hit the mat. Yeah, I like that. That's great. That's a great breakdown. So I'll jump off and say, and this is weird for me because my gut is telling me Volkanovski and my heart is telling me Ortega. I'm probably the bigger fan of Brian Ortega. I just have, of course, ultimate respect for Volkanovski. So this is this is tough, you know. For me right now, my gut is telling me Volkanovski by decision that he's going to weather some some heavy punches and some mission attempts and that he's going to push the pace and control the octagon. He's going to get some ground and pound. He's going to land more strikes, more significant strikes. That's how I'm thinking the fight's going to play out as of now. If I look at the money line and see, see Brian as a dog, I would go straight money line Brian Ortega. I'll take plus money line for Brian Ortega to win all day. One loss in the UFC. Great fighter. Of course, this is probably the highest level competition to this point on the biggest stage of his career to this point. So it's a little different. That's why I get why the odds the way they are. But for my pick as of right now for this early prediction, I'm going Alexander Volkanovsky by decision. Um, I got Brian Ortega. Uh, man, I want yeah, I want to say I want to say a triangle choke. That'd yeah, be good. yeah. I'm just gonna go with my heart, Brian Ortega, T City. Let's go triangle choke in the third or fourth round. Love it, love it. Okay, I'd love to see that. All right, let's move on to the next fight and the main fight pick of the evening. It's time right, Chris, for the main quick, quick fight pod. pick of the evening. <laughs> okay, that's it. Sorry, guys. I, I always screenshot the show, and I, I don't have a thumbnail, so now I know. Right before the main, I'll, I'll go, piece that go. up. <laughs> so for the main event, we've got Uriah Primetime Hall coming in as a plus 172 dog for Sean Tarzan Strickland coming in as the minus 215 favorite. So, you know, both fighters are on a resurgence of their career for Uriah Hall. You know, he's on a bit. One is last four. Oh, the last was a broken leg. That's right. A broken leg against Chris, Chris Weidman. Um, on the other side, Sean Strickland, for those who don't know his story, he had a nasty accident by falling off his motorcycle, broke his leg. And he's been on the comeback since and it ended up being life threatening at the time. 
Um, so he's, he's been doing great since. Uriah Hall on the other side, he's 17-9, and nine, but he's kind of had this, you know, he beat Anderson Silva, snapped Chris Weidman's leg. You know, that was really kind of a, a freak accident, if you will. Um, but still, he's got the three-inch reach advantage. This is the longest winning streak of his career. When Uriah Hall first came in the UFC, they thought that he was going to be the next champion. He had a lot of hype behind him. I even remember Uriah hyping him up uh, at the time. This was like three, four years ago. And so it, it's it's interesting that he's keeping this up. I'm happy for him to find this late in the career. Not a lot of guys do. I don't know if it's his his uh, camp change or his, his personal – his. Uh, psychology change and his mental state and what got him to be at this point, but he's doing great. Sean Strickland on the other side, 23-3, and 3, 10 TKOs, four straight wins in the UFC. And what, what we note about this guy is that he loves talking shit in the octagon. He's known for yelling at his opponents and, and talking smack. And he, we all know three weeks ago he was caught up in that viral video to where you know he threw a front leg kick and a, a short left hook on a guy who was trying to crank his, his arm a bit. So he got a lot of news on that. So opening up for this UFC fight night uh, main event, Chris, what pops out of you first for Uriah Hall versus Sean Strickland? It was, I automatically think about, you know, Uriah's last fight versus Weidman. Yeah. You know, that was the crazy leg break and uh, unfortunate for Weidman. And, you know, Uriah Hall's the type of guy that, you know, he, he's constantly getting better. He, he, he moved camps and... Um, you know, anytime you move camps, you're going to pick up new stuff from you know, the, the new coaches. You're going to, yeah, the new fighters. I think you always level up a little bit because, you know, MMA is the type of thing like everyone's got a different recipe. You know, it's kind of like all, you know, we all know the basic and fundamentals and that, that should always be established first. But and then at the same, everyone came, all the coaches have come up, come up differently. They have different experience. And they have different ways of showing things, different details, different just different way of doing things, yeah. right? And you know, I, I've, I've been fortunate enough to you know come up with a lot of good coaches and seeing uh, what works best for me, what works works best for just in general for a, a larger uh, you know group. And it's just cool, you know, when someone goes to a different team, they're gonna have to level up. If they don't, they probably made the wrong choice, right? They, they didn't go to a you know, good enough team. So, you know, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, Uriah Hall keep progressing in his MMA because he was always like the, the karate style kick kickboxer yep. with the highlight KOs, but he was always kind of like lack in the, the grappling department. Like we never really saw him really shine in that department. Yep. And Fortis MMA is not really known for their grappling. So maybe he just like the coaches there or I don't know what's going on there. But I would like to see a guy like Uriah Hall like really get good at some grappling so he can have that threat to the to the fight game as well and you know he's probably been working on that but guys always resort to what they're best at then you got strickland who you know he's a vet he's, he's got you know over 25 fights he's been in the the ufc for what he's got 13 fights in the ufc now 10 and 3 in the ufc four straight wins yeah. so he, he he's coming off of uh you know a, a good winning streak um, I, I, I think he's not going to strike with Uriah. He's going to probably try to, you know, blend the MMA game up and, and, and try to, smart. you know, coming from Team Quest, he, he has the, the Greco-Roman uh, kind of training style and he's going to be able to mix things up in the clinch. And that's where I think he's going to be the most effective is, is, is trying to get in Uriah's head with, with the trash talk, get in his yeah. ear a little bit, make it a dirty fight. Do not play the striking range game with Uriah Hall. Just don't, you know, you're going to play into his weapons. So I think Sean needs to, you know, to blend it up, make it a dirty fight, put him against the cage, uh, try to take all those, uh, you know, crazy kicks away from Uriah. My dad used to always say, like, how do you beat a kicker? Is you get close to him. Smother you him. jam yeah. him, you know, and they can't kick you. Yeah. So I think Sean needs to implement that into this fight. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be – I think that's a great breakdown. I think Sean should mix it up. He loves his stand-up game. He loves to stand and strike, but – you know, he may have met his match here with Uriah Hall. You know, Uriah loves to counterpunch. I was just, when he was fighting Anderson Silva, you know, they were both wait, 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 because they were both kind of counterpunch type of guys. But when he lets it loose and throws more than one punch at a time, Uriah Hall can put anyone away. He's got that power, those powerful hooks, those powerful kicks. You can't take too many of his leg kicks, um, you know, or he's going to start compromising those those knees those for that front leading leg. So... This is a hard one. This is a hard one to pick because Uriah, they're they're both on four fight winning streaks. They're both looking really good. Uriah Hall has the bigger names. 
Sean Strickland is just coming up and, and beating anyone he can. I was really impressed with that Brendan Allen win as well. This is extremely tough. We got number eight versus number 11. This is for the main event. Chris, Chris, what you got? <laughs> Tell me your breakdown. Who? What's the win and method of victory? This is a hard one for me. Yeah, I'm going to go with Uriah Hall by uh, by KO. Yeah, I think Uriah is going to find him. Oh, uh, it's a big pick. Yeah. Okay, you're going Uriah Hall by KO. I'm going to stay on the other side. I'm going to go Sean Strickland. I th Maybe... Uh, because Uriah, I was really he, I, he played the waiting game too much with Anderson Silva. He ended up getting the finish, so you know, it is what it is. But I'm gonna say Sean is gonna end up leading more and being more of the aggressive guy. I'm gonna say Sean Strickland by decision. That'll be my official fight pick. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching Fight Picks with the Pros, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel. Thank you for everyone listening out there in podcast land. We'll see you next time. Hello, everyone. Bruce Buffer here. Thank you for watching the MMA Surge YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and get notified when we upload next.